let's see how to set up the Replit website and clone the Git repository that we're going to use that's got all the source code in it. So the first thing to do, go on to Replit and get yourself an account and log in. As soon as you've done that, open up the menu and create a new REPL. Now we don't need to install Linux because everything's going to be done using this online environment which supports a huge number of different languages. So instead of creating a new REPL with this option, we're actually going to import a bunch of code that I've written on GitHub. And that at the moment is in a repository called Glittering Prize for want of a better name. So if I import that from GitHub, it starts to download all the code. So that's it loaded. Now there are three areas. First of all, on the left, we have a file browser and that shows you the different folders which contain the project files as well as the actual files themselves. Now, of course, on the right hand side, I have a bash command shell and the commands that we looked at before still work. So ls still works and pwd for present working directory still works and cd if I want to change into the project one folder that still works as well. So you might still want to bear that in mind. The middle area is actually uh, an, ed an editor window. So if I was to be looking at project one a partial .py then I can make changes to the code uh, in that window which is nice and easy and probably easier than using Vim at the moment. Vim still works so you can still use Vim to edit, to edit project 1a partial. That still works and any edits that you do make will appear in the middle file window instantly. I don't think it works the other way around though. So you can use Vim if you want. And then once you're ready to run the program then Python project 1a partial.py will run with the usual syntax error that we still need to fix. Now there is a run button at the top but you have to configure it so that it knows what, it, what you want to do when you click on run. So in the next video we'll have a look at how to get this project 1a to actually function correctly.